Hey guys, Tara and Nick here, and today we're going to be talking about Valiant Hearts, yes. The Great War. Uh, this was announced at Ubisoft's Digital Day last year, so mm. it is a downloadable game. Um, it's very, very unique. Uh, this is being done by Ubisoft Montpellier, which uh, is the studio responsible for the most recent uh, Rayman games, Rayman mm -hmm. Origins and Rayman Legends. Uh, and it's also being built on the UbiArt framework, yes. which was created for Rayman. Totally. This is the second game, the second non-Rayman game that we've seen this year on the UbiArt engine, and it, unsurprisingly, is really, really pretty. Yeah. It's like it's, gorgeous. It's so beautiful. It's got, uh, it's all 2D, uh, I guess like 2.5D technically. Mm -hmm. It's got, everything's got this really hand-drawn look to it. Yeah. And there are certain parts in the game that seem like they're very drab and then other parts that are really bright and colorful. Yeah, that's kind of my favorite thing about it right off the bat is that it's cartoony, but it it's all over the place tonally in a good way. Like, the, the dark scenes are dark, the scenes of levity are funny. It's kind of runs the gamut in terms of tone. Yeah. I like that you mentioned it's 2.5D too, because there's a lot of good background scrolling, yeah. a lot of parallax, like an old Sonic game or something. Yeah. I love seeing um, that and, and the whole game has this historical basis to it. So so it's inspired by letters that were written during the Great War, yeah. World War One. Uh, so the game takes place between 1914 and 1918, sort of right in the middle of the Great War, right when it starts. Mm -hmm. um, and it's so, it follows a story of four different soldiers who all get drafted into the war, and then they all meet each other and become friends, mm -hmm. and eventually they band together to help another soldier reunite with his long-lost love. Mm -hmm. um, like you were saying, it does have a very dark story, yeah. but a lot of moments in the game are very whimsical. Yeah. I think my favorite example of that is that for parts of the game you'll have this dog companion, and the dog is permanently cute. And what I mean by that is that one of his ears is constantly like in a cute mm. downward bent. Like, it's precious. It's, it can be as whimsical as it wants to sometimes. Yeah, and, and you play, um, in separate parts of the game, you play as each of the soldiers. So mm. there's actually five playable characters in total. Um, there are other characters that you meet along the way, including Anna, who is a veterinary student mm -hmm. um, living in Paris, and you get to visit Paris during that part of the game, and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and like you were saying, there is the dog, which is actually a crucial part of the gameplay. Uh, it, it is a puzzle adventure game. I would say, uh, as far as most of the gameplay goes, it is pretty standard adventure pretty, game Pretty fare. typical. I think they maybe deserve some commendation for the way that they've minimized or, or made it minimal looking. Like, whenever you walk up to a soldier, there won't be a text box. That there will be uh, maybe like a noun and a verb, right? Yeah. Like a picture of the person you should give an item to and a picture of that item. And they've kind of stripped it down and made it very straightforward. But in terms of the puzzle complexity, you're absolutely right there. Puzzle game puzzles. They're adventure yeah. game puzzles. Yeah, so. I mean, you're going to be like throwing objects, moving stuff from this place to this place, and then going back and getting something else. Um, but there are some unique elements thrown in with the gameplay, one of which is the dog. Um, so you can actually play as the dog. Mm -hmm. uh, at any point in the game, if you press the left bumper, the whole screen will go black and white, which mm -hmm. I thought was a really Aww. cool touch. Um, and then anything that you can interact with as the dog has a little button next to it. So mm -hmm. like press X to bring this bone to the soldier and then he can, you know, use it as a lever or something like that. Um, you're basically going to be helping out all of the other soldiers in the game. Uh, and then there are these sort of mini-game elements interspersed in there, which I was right. not expecting to see. No, me neither. See. The healing thing was, was interesting. Yeah, there are a couple uh, rhythm-based mini-games. Yes, it's, it almost reminds me of the, uh, the rhythm game sequences in Rayman Legends, where you're sort of running through the level in time. There are a couple sequences we saw where you're driving a buggy in time with music and like missiles are falling or some obstacle like that all happening to the rhythm of like a song from the era. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really awesome. Um, the music actually is one of my favorite things about this game. Uh, and there's tons of collectibles around and each of them has a really cool backstory tied into it. Mm. And you can go into the menu system at any time into your inventory and read more about yeah. the historical basis there's of the ton. item you just picked up. Um, so I, I think this game is is really really good. I I remember seeing this when they first announced it and thinking that it looked fantastic, mm. and it completely exceeded my expectations. Um, I love the blend of historical facts with gameplay. They have uh, one part in the game where they talk about chlorine gas, which is something that was actually used in World War One. And there are parts of the game where you have to sort of avoid the chlorine gas, yeah, and it, it works into the puzzle or elements. Yeah, it. exactly. Um, and the music, like you were saying, 
uh, is also one of my favorite things about the game. Mm -hmm. it, there's so many like really triumphant World War One era yeah. songs in it. A lot of orchestral and piano pieces that are just like gorgeous, and I'm not usually a sucker for that kind of thing, but I thought it was, was yeah. great here. Um, and then just the art style of the game. Uh, the setting is, is I think, really interesting too. They have, um, like I said, you go to Paris at one point in the game. Um, you're out in the battle, actual battlefield most of the time. Yeah, a lot but, of trench stuff. Exactly, but even the more drab settings of the game seem to be presented in a really mm -hmm. beautiful and colorful way. And then just the sort of juxtaposition of, of the deep, dark elements of the story and the whimsical, funny moments of the game is something that I really, really liked about this. Yeah, it really excited me to kind of see the UbiArt engine used for something other than a platformer, right? Because Rayman was pretty straightforward in that yeah. regard, and then Child of Light was basically a JRPG in this engine, and now they're showing us that you can do almost a minimal point-and-click adventure with it, which is really cool. Yeah, two completely different art styles, totally. Rayman and, and Valiant Hearts. Uh, one thing that I really liked in this game that I don't think I really saw in other UbiArt games is there's a lot of neat picture-in-picture -picture stuff where it'll cut away a corner of the screen and show you the action somewhere else on the battlefield. Exactly. Um, it, it is not out yet, it's not finished, so I, I, there were some technical issues occasionally. I'd see like pop-in, which I've never seen in an UbiArt game before, hmm. or characters sort of loading in after the background did, but for the most part it seemed extremely solid and extremely yeah. polished. And it is really releasing soon. This is coming out uh, June 25th, mm -hmm. and it's going to be on a ton of different platforms. Uh, I believe they're planning for PS3, PS4, mm -hmm. Xbox 360, Xbox One, and PC. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be launching for $14.99, and like I said, it is a downloadable title. It is single player only, so I am really, really looking yeah. forward to this. It, it seems like, it, it didn't strike me as maybe the longest game in the world, that's just speculation, but it yeah. seems like the type of thing I would like to sit down and enjoy if for no other reason than that it's a World War One game. Like, how often do we see World War One games? You know? Yeah, and the tone of it is, is especially unique for the genre of game it is. So, yeah, June 25th, guys. I'm excited about this. If you are too, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.